Well, thank you, Jennifer. Now, you've been hearing us talk about the 2017 Faith Challenge, a 12-step spiritual workout. Our first workout focus is daily Bible reading and time in prayer. But how does a daily time in prayer look? How does one even start? Well, Jennifer is with author and pastor Kim Lyons of In Faith Ministries and has more on that very topic. Pastor Kim Lyons from In Faith Ministries joins us as we continue our 2017 Faith Challenge 12-step spiritual renewal and we're talking about prayer, daily prayer life. And if that is a part of your life already, that's wonderful, but I'm gonna tell you it can always be enhanced. If it's not a part of your daily prayer life, or your daily life, prayer is, well, today is the first day that that can change and your life will be enhanced. Pastor Kim, thank you for being with us and let's Some just question. jump right in and okay. talk about prayer, the importance of praying every day. It, it's so important, you know, uh, our prayer lives, really connects us with God, the purpose of God, the will of God. And not only that, but he created us to have this, this great relationship. Mm -hmm. And the only way to really cultivate the relationship is through talking to God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, people are intimidated by prayer because oftentimes, it's, you know, they, they consider what do I say and how do I approach him? And, and you know, you have to approach him with a pure heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to definitely approach him and uh, with sincerity of heart. But he wants you to be able to talk to him just clearly, just in the personality that you have, just, just honestly, and just lay everything at the altar and just uh, grab a hold of this relationship that he wants us to have so, mm -hmm. so bad. You know, he desires to have a relationship mm -hmm. with us, you know. And what I discovered when when God started moving on my heart to pray, I really didn't know how to pray. I was a part of a, a inner circle prayer group of women who just kind of adopted me into their, their circle. And I just prayed from my heart. You know, mm -hmm. I was, you know, I would say things that I was ashamed of, wondered if I said the right thing, mm -hmm. but it was from my heart, you mm -hmm. know. And they sort of cultivated and showed me how to pray, how to approach God. And, and, and first of all, just to ask him to forgive you of all your sins, you know, just to wash you clean, just get rid of what's bad and, and fill inside of me everything that's good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they taught me how to, how to praise him, how to honor him, mm -hmm. how, how to lift him up. You know, he loves to be exalted. He loves to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. He loves to, to be uh, showered yeah. with so much blessings. And so uh, this group sort of helped develop me to learn how to pray. Now, I think when people might think about prayer, mm -hmm. the first thing they want to do is give their, their wish list to God yeah, or their want do. list or their need list. Yeah. And that's oftentimes the natural starting point. God, yeah. I need this. I need your help. Um, but you said we need to be praising yeah. God. Yeah. We need to praise him. Yeah, we do. I, I think we forget the fact that God wants to have this relationship with us and he wants to be intimate with us. And so we look more so, I think, on our challenges, what we desire, and we forget about the relationship. Uh, when I began to set aside time uh, to, to praise him and to worship him and to get to know him, because I knew I was saved, but I didn't know the God who saved me. Yeah. But I believed yeah. in the God who saved me. There's a difference to believe and to know the God that saved you. And so my desire uh, caused me to pursue him, to want to know who are you? How do you, how, you know, everybody said God will talk to you. I was like, well, how does he talk to you? You know, what <laughs> does he, do you hear him? Do, does he speak to you in your heart? How does he speak to you? And so I began to pursue him with a, a fervency. I mean, uh, I remember reading my Bible and I had just got saved and I didn't know where to begin, but I did know if you looked in the New Testament, if you read everything that was marked in red, then that was Jesus speaking mm -hmm. to you. So I just began to pursue him. And as I pursued him, you know, I drew near to him and he drew near to me. And then it began to cultivate this wonderful relationship, mm -hmm. this wonderful relationship. That's incredible for me to listen to when mm -hmm. you say when I first got saved, because yeah. I see who you are now. Yeah. And uh, the radiance of yeah. God beaming through you, which says, look what can happen yeah. when you set aside, you said you set aside time. Yeah. So for a person who isn't praying regularly, mm -hmm. would you suggest that they 
they make a point every day. I'm going to I'm going to make sure at this point or I'm yeah. going to I'm going to schedule this into my day. What would you recommend? I would recommend, you know, first of all, we know when we wake up in the morning to just thank God, have a moment of prayer. Uh, but sometimes with busy life and families, you're trying to get the kids off to school, mm -hmm. you're trying to fix breakfast, you're trying to prepare lunch, you know, you're trying to get everything together. And, and when you have children, something always comes up. Uh, I would suggest uh, waking up, having that moment to pray with God, like a daily, you know, the daily uh, bread book. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. have a small devotion and then set aside time, whether on your lunch hour, uh, any time where it's quiet, get a quiet place, find your spot where God talks to you and you talk to him and begin to cultivate that relationship and read your Bible. And should a person feel badly if that's like a two minute thing? No. You know, yeah. I don't have an hour to pray. What yeah. do I do, Pastor Kim? Yeah. I don't have time, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could pray in the car. I remember dropping my kids off uh, when I lived in Dayton, Ohio. I would drop them off at school, and then from there, they would be walking into the church. I mean, not the church, the school, and I would pray for them as they walked in. Sometime before they got out of the car, I would just say a quick prayer, God, just I plead the blood of Jesus over them, bless them. You know, it would be just instant. But the more uh, I stayed committed to mm the prayers for two minutes, the prayers for five minutes. It began to co cultivate a longing to want to pray longer. Mm -hmm. and, and so I would suggest uh, taking two, three minutes just to pray, just to praise them, uh, to ask God to forgive you of all your sins because he wants you to have a pure heart. And oftentimes if we don't have, um, if we don't confess those sins, it, it blocks our prayers. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, your prayer won't go, uh, it can only go so far, but when you have an open heart, Mm -hmm. of forgiveness and repentance. It's a clear shot, you know, just a, a, a straight shot to the Lord. So I would encourage them five minutes, devotions, uh, daily bread, mm -hmm. go to the Christian bookstore, find some type of devotion that's not intimidating where you can read. And, and, and sometimes they have little prayers. You can pray at the end of that devotion, oh, yeah. which really helps you learn how to pray. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of prayers, mm -hmm. you have a book that yeah. is an excellent guide. Yeah. You tell you what, if you are saying, I don't know how to pray, I don't know how to start. You know, Pastor Kim has mentioned various elements, forgiveness. We yeah. can come to God without shame. It doesn't matter what we've done in our life. Yeah. He will accept us. And then there are other, you know, we do need to praise him. Sometimes it can be tough to do that, but God can do so much when we say, okay, I am going to be diligent to praise you. But how do we do it? What do we say? Tell you what, Pastor Kim has an incredible book that, uh, um, when I started reading these prayers, mm -hmm. I just felt the presence Good. of God just move in. And yeah. I loved the way you moved from those elements of forgiveness, yeah. confession, mm -hmm. um, you know, putting the big picture before God. Tell us about 21 days of prayer. Impact. 21 days of prayer impact is really uh, a blessing to me. Uh, the Lord laid on my heart maybe three or four years ago to start doing a corporate prayer uh, phone call with our church mm -hmm. to sort of engage us and uh, bring us together in unity and oneness. And so from there, uh, people were inspired and, and they were saying, Pastor Kim, you should do it again. You should do it again. So the Lord laid on my heart to pray the first seven days of every month. And from there, from, from that obedience became this book. <laughs> so it's corporate prayers of the prayer uh, conversations that I've had on prayer and path. Uh, and this is 21 days. 21 days. So you've really created something that if a person wants to, they just start on day one yes. and can use this as part of their devotional as a guide. life yeah. all the mm -hmm. way through. Yeah. Yeah. How can a person get a copy of this book? Well, you can order it on Amazon and okay. you can also get one, uh, a copy at our church. You can call okay. our church, call uh, telephone number and they can get one out. And that me. is In Faith Ministries there. We have the address, the phone number and the website right there on the screen. The book is 21 Days of Prayer Impact, Prayers That Will Initiate Change. You know, so often we start the new year with the idea of change. We want to change the things from the past. We want to change situations in our lives that we don't appreciate or we don't like. We want to change what's surrounding us. Well, Prayer is a starting point to make that change because we want to be in alignment with God's change. That's the kind of change we want. 21 Days of Prayer Impact by Kim Lyons, available at Amazon.com or available um, at the church in Faith Ministries. You also have a website, yes. KimLyonsMinistries.org. You travel around and speak to. I do, too. I do. Yeah, so uh -huh. if uh, people want to book you to speak, that's yes. where they need to go yes, for that kind of thing. that's where they need to go. All right, excellent. Pastor Kim, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for I your wisdom it. and for everything you're doing in the community. Uh, you and your husband are such thank a blessing so to us. And we will throw it back to you.